Greetings, it's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Uh, we're not going right into the character draw right away today, because there are a couple things I want to talk about before we get started. A few um, explanations. First thing I should explain is the music you're hearing in the background. I don't normally put music in the background, partially because um, I have a lot I'm doing already, and if I was going to do music as well, I'd have to make music and pick music. And it just, it, it helps me keep things going if I'm not um, trying to select music all the time. I made an exception for this partially because it's easier. Um, Conquest of Planet Earth, the space alien game, along with I think the other games by Flying Frog Productions, comes with a CD of music um, that has no uh, mechanic value unlike um, some other games like Space Alert. Um, it's just background music for the game and it's all composed and uh, played by, and, uh, forgive me if I pronounced your name wrong, Mary Beth Magalanes. Maga. Magalanes. 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 Magai. Magai. Magalanes. Uh, whatever her name is, she um, made this music and I sent them an email and asked if I could ask them if I could use it in this video and they, she, she herself wrote back that, of course I can, so that's great. Um, I really like that they, they put music in with the, the game because I think music is very experiential and I think uh, games can be looked at as a, as a, as a set of parameters or instructions um, to create an experience. So it seems only natural that there would be a, a CD in here. A uh, little side note, a lot of my games, I will put a, a CD in the game box for what, you know, a, a CD I think is good to play with it. Um, Ghost Stories is an example. I have a, I have a particular CD, I think it's by Chen Yi, that I like to listen to when I play Ghost Stories and it really adds to the feeling of the game for me when I, when I do that. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. The next thing I want to talk about is um, this right here. So. Uh, this is going to be sort of an experiment. I haven't tried it yet, but um, I'm going to be combining these two games in a very, very simple way. But it might not be, it might not uh, flow well. I don't know. So I'll just explain what I'm doing. So Conquest of Planet Earth, the space alien game, has uh, you get terror points in it. I think they're called. Uh, yeah. So when you conquest, when you conquer in the in the game, you're you're aliens and you're trying to conquer different places on Earth. When you conquer a place, you can die on a ship. Vigios, um, you score points in a lot of different ways. Um, Vigios is a game about creating uh, creating the world. Basically, you're, you're these godlike entities. Conquest of the Planet Earth, the space alien game, you're aliens destroying the Earth. So I thought it would be fun to combine them um, and kind of use the, the Conquest of Planet Earth mythos with, with embellishing on it a little bit. Um, so these are these are advanced aliens in this game, and they are sent by the, this super race called the Overseers to destroy Earth or take over Earth, conquer Earth. Um, so the Heos, you're trying to create Earth. So what I thought it would would be fun is if um, the Earth was sort of sort of like a field that, a, that the, the farmers planted, um, the, the farmers being the overseers, aliens. And so um, in Mejios, you're kind of you're kind of sowing the seeds, and then conquest the planet Earth, the space alien game, you're um, harvesting the seeds. So the seeds being humankind, um, the other species on the planet. Um, since they're advanced, they time works differently in their mind, and so it's it's connected by um, by these events rather than um, being a linear game. So um, I'm going to be playing these games concurrently as one game, and basically the only change I'm making is how when points are scored. Um, when whenever you score in Gehios, you're going to multiply. When I say you, I'm talking about the real people. You're not playing. You're just watching. Um, whenever you score in Dijios, you're going to multiply um, whatever score you got by the number of terror points um, that your your race currently has in Conquest of Planet Earth, the space alien game. So that should be uh, fun. I, I don't know how it's going to go. So the, the third thing I kind of piece of news is this is the first real people... Um, 
multi-game solitaire mega tournament game where the winners are going to immediately advance. Um, all the other games I've done to this point have been kind of these little branches that are leading up to um, to the next game. So whoever wins this will be in uh, Here I Stand. Uh, I would have to, I don't actually remember who they're going to be in Here I Stand, but I'll have to check up on that. Um, should be fun. Maybe if, if, if it doesn't play well, we may have to play a couple different combinations of these two games. But it's only going to be these two games. I'm not going to stick another game in after this one. All right, time for the character draw. All right, so here we have our deck. We're going to mix it up a bit. Draw our first person, and then I'll come up and talk to you about who they are. Here. Here we go. All right. I've actually seen this guy before. He, his name is uh, Bix, and he's a street preacher. Uh, I haven't. When I said I've seen him, I haven't seen him in person. I saw his card before. Um, his secret fantasy is to get married. An unusual fact about Bix is he lives with street people. Uh, his pet peeve is people who can't share burdens with worthy friends. I think that statement might be a key to who he is. Um, he'd like to meet who we've already met. Who you would like to meet is you. Come join him. He has some things he'd like to talk with you about. Um, his personal motto is, take it easy. Um, he's most proud of love, joy, peace, and hospitality. His reputation in high school is the class angel, and three words that describe Bix are peaceful, pleasant, and friendly. I think he's a very good character for this game we're about to embark on. Alright, so next, let's see who we have. Um, this is Roadrunner. She is a housewife. You can't see her very well. I'm going to come up with you. Um, Roadrunner, she is a housewife, and her secret fantasy is to be five feet and win the Miss America pageant. An unusual fact is she has a birthmark in the shape of a poodle. Her pet peeve is counting gray hair. Uh, she'd like to meet Robert Redford. Her personal motto is, don't worry, smile, smile. She's most proud of being an American. In her reputation in high school, she's shy. Three words that describe her is, are Korean, short, and happy. Now that is strange to me. She um, is proud to be an American, but she also describes herself as being Korean. So maybe she's... Um, I guess it's not that strange. She could, she have dual um, citizenship. All right, I'm gonna mix them up. All right, third draw, and all right, this is Lefty. He is a financial manager, and he would like to win mega bucks. His unusual fact is he's born a blue baby. He's a very sad baby. Um, and uh, his pet peeve is drivers who don't use their signals. He'd like to meet an attractive young millionaire. His personal motto is, win the easiest way you can, except cheating. That's good, because I do not want these people to cheat. Uh, he's most proud of how far he's come with the little work he's done. Uh, reputation in high school is very competitive. Three words that describe him are always on top. Right, lefty. Let's go right into our final one here. Yeah. It's Smiley. Oh, she's got great teeth. Uh, she's a social worker. Her secret fantasy is to rob a bank. She delivered a baby in someone's home. That's her unusual fact. I've done that actually as well. Um, her pet peeve is people who look around when they're talking to you. She'd like to, <laughs> she'd like to, <laughs> she'd like to meet the light torch keeper at the Statue of Liberty. Her personal motto is, Every once in a while, you have to say, what the f***? Uh, her most pro- it says, I'm not, I'm not censoring myself, so said, she's censoring herself. Her, she's most proud of her family. Her reputation in high school is too good to be true. And three words that describe her are energetic, wise, generous, and modest. I'm adding that one. Alright, so we have our group. I'm excited for this group. I think they've got a lot of flavor and, um, I'm going to go set up the game and try and make enough space in my little um, nook upstairs to make it all work. 
Okay, we managed to get everything set up here. Um, I'll just go over so you see that I this is where I, I, I have this shelf here that I have various things on. Um, I put a, a cloth over one of the shelves and I, I hope that will be enough room for Gajillos. Hopefully they don't build too much this way or they're gonna go off into oblivion. It might be sort of a, a limit um, on the game. But hopefully we can make it work. Um, let's talk about who I chose to go with which race and why. I pulled the, the alien races out randomly and then um, looked at them and just kind of determined who would go with who. I didn't do it randomly or anything. Um, first of all, the men were were pretty clearly assigned. We have Rantillian Beetlemen and Fishmen of Atlarak. Um, we had two men and two women, so the men were going to be those two. Um, Bix here seemed more like he would be into Beetlemen, for one. Bix Beetlemen street preacher um and yeah he just seems like the kind of guy who could you you would meet and he would talk about Beetleman and so that that seemed to work they just seemed to to pair well um over here lefty went with the fishman of Atlarak he seems like the cold opportunist he he wants to um make a lot of money by not doing anything, um, which makes, I don't know, the, the fishmen seem like they kind of just want to take things too. So I guess all of the, the races are, are sort of that way, which is why they're trying to conquer Earth. But he seems like a cold man, um, and so fishmen worked well for him. The Venetian matriarchy, uh, seemed obvious they would choose women. Now I see nothing wrong with, um, crossing genders and picking races, but I, I feel like most people don't do that. So I just kind of assumed that these people wouldn't want to do that. And, and it also helped me make up my mind too. So um, I had to choose between Smiley and um, Roadrunner to be the Venetian mate. Matriarchy. I went with Roadrunner because, you know, she wants to be a Miss American pageant. She seems like she's more into kind of the, the standard, um, standard, ideas of beauty and plus I liked Smiley as the Orzak, these kind of like these smiling brains who um, you know, she kind of seems like she could be an Orzak. Um, yeah. And so they it was it wasn't a hard decision to make when we, when it came down to it. So I got everything down these are their little scoring chips for um Gijios, and you're going to see that they're going to have these little colored markers that go with them too. For those of you who don't know Gahios, those colored markers aren't going to have anything to do with the colors that they are. They're the colors that they have essentially invested in um, on what's going to be an a, a, a expanding map in Gahios. So I'll, I'll do the first turn. I'm going to do um, Conquest of Planet Earth turn first, then Gahios, and we're going to just alternate that way. Partially because Conquest of Planet Earth has the sort of um, auctioning for, for first, first player order. And um, say if they score right away in Gahios, if they haven't, um, if they haven't any points on the board, any terror points um, yet, then it's whatever they score is going to be multiplied by zero, and so that'll make the first turn kind of a bummer. Ow! All right, so Roadrunner ended up going first with his three here. Here's what went down. She um, she first got some Alien Menace tokens with this What Is That Thing card, got a great roll. Um, then she decided to just send two people out um, with her remaining two actions to these blank spaces, which later got turned up. The reason why she did such a kind of risky move is she has a lot of things that can kind of help her get out of fights. She has her special abilities, which can help her, her seductive glance, and she has all these Menace tokens to use now that she wants to use them. And then the cards she had, remaining were also um, ones that would, would help her get out of a, a, a fight if need be. And she figures it's good to use the cards because the draw phase is at the end of her turn anyway, so why not use them and hopefully get something even better. So what she did is she went to this mountain observatory and it's right next to a mountain range. I think that's a nice thing that um, Chance gave me was two, two mountain places right next to each other. 
kind of gives a nice uh, natural border to the world too. Oh, she went backwards too because she feels like that's a nice little pocket she can keep a little easier, you know, without the others getting involved. Um, so anyway, what happened was she got a four and they got a five. Um, she got the red dye, which is nice for her. I think I should find a colored dye for the other people so they don't feel left out. I'll, I'll have to look in my little container. Um, so she made them re-roll. They re-rolled and got a four. So they tied. They rolled again. Another four and five. Um, she had a choice. She could either use her menace tokens then to switch the die and win, or do what she actually ended up doing, which is use this diplomatic withdrawal, which just made this guy go back here. Um, she figures it's not really worth using the menace tokens unless she has to. Um, because she can send multiple aliens there next turn in order to capture it. And besides, the first turn is generally not too big of a scoring turn in Cahillo. So let's see what tile she picks. All right, the first civilization has been established on the planet, um, and Roadrunner currently has two followers from it. That was sort of the um, crowning achievement, the capstone of her turn, that and the alien menace she accumulated. The work she did on the board didn't do much except turn up a bunch of mountains. Um, Smiley has had a better turn so far. Uh, she has already conquered this small town. She got rid of some U.S. Army Rangers. Um, and now she's about to try and see if she can get these fairgrounds. Um, the local police have, have buttressed themselves in the fairgrounds. Dix decided that they had prepared defenses, and so that added two to their soft strength. Um, they are fortunate also to have an investigative reporter who um, is helping them be more alert, I guess, and that helps them be stronger as well. So they have a strength of five versus the Orzak strength of two. Two twos is, see, there's two twos, that's four. Um, so Smiley doesn't really want to risk it. She is going to pretend that the Orzaks come in peace and so she, they just automatically win um, and conquer the fairgrounds, which is great because the fairgrounds is worth three points. That brings her up to four as soon as she scores. So she has four terror points. If she scores in Gehios, that's going to be multi that's going to be a four multiplier, which is quite sizable. In the regular game of Conquest of Planet Earth, it ends at eight points, so you know, she'll be halfway there. I do to a smiley and a smiley induced unexpected chemical reaction, one of these aliens at the radio station, one of these Rentilian beetle men who were about to confront these war veterans, uh, who are um, veteran army infantrymen, um, is, is worthless. He, um, he's freaking out. So now, poor Bix, Bix's beetle men, is alone three against six. A veteran infantry person is worth six. And so he has really no choice but to use this menace token and summon in his other beetlemen to help. And that'll bring their total up to nine. And six, that's a little bit better. Um, if he can use his disintegration means, they will have collective of either that would be 12 or 13 if that adds one to this one or not. But we can go ahead and roll. Basically, if they get a, it really just depends if they get a six or not. And they did not. He got a six, so it's a crushing defeat. The radio station belongs to Bix's Beetleman. I had my first knowing mess up there. Um, I moved the blue guys, <laughs> which are lefty, the blue babies, um, rather than the green guys. I just, I just moved it down here, it's the same result, same same tactics, same everything, so I don't think it really will upset anything. Bix just got a warlord, and I think that's a good time to, sh to check in on Gehios. Um, he also started a civilization there, the white civilization near the pyramid, um, so he has a white follower. I don't know if I mentioned, but Smiley took a red follower on her turn and added to the red civilization. Okay, Lefty is in a really tough position. Um, let's go over what he did on his turn. First thing he did was he drew a secondary brain unit, which made him more intelligent. And he's now the, the most intelligent person on the board. Um, he 
was tied for intelligence, but now he's one smarter. Then he um, caused freedom fighters to spring up on Vix's board. Uh, so that was something that kind of stymied Vix's efforts. Then he sent three guys forward. You notice there's only two there now. He sent three guys forward and to explore, and they encountered a military base, which is a lot of work for very little buck. Um, for those of you who don't know the game, this is the terror points you're going to get. That's the population of a place. So the higher this, the better. The higher this, the more you're going to have to battle. Um, so normally you, you would have to take on each of these one at a time. However, Roadrunner decided that the defenders here were in the unit. Thus, this United Defense card, they all turned up at the same time. It started out, it was just local police. Then came Captain Fantastic and U.S. Army fighter planes. So that makes it 2, 8, 14. He gets a one strength for each alien at the location. There were three there. Um, one of the aliens decided to betray them at Fix's urging. Um, so that alien is against them now. Went away, um, brought them down to four, six, two threes or six, um, and added it's, it's three to here. So, right, you know, it's basically he's got to get a six in order to beat them. So, he's got a blue die here. Let's see what he does. <laughs> that, I bet that's the facial expression he would have if this was actually what was happening to him. Kind of thing happens to him every day. All right, and he did not get a six. I don't know how much resistance he had, but he completely won that fight. Um, and he's going to go ahead and retreat. Alrighty, we've gone through a turn. Um, we're going to have to stop now because we're going to get all the and ready to go. Um, and, we, and it's a good stop. Uh, so let's take a look at everyone's prospects. Um, if we look at our whiteboard up here real quick, you can see the terror total is one for you, for Smiley, and no one else has gotten any any more terror points than that. Um, that one, however, is just a multiplier. It's not worth any points at all. So no one has any points recorded because no one scored in Gios yet. Um, Smiley, I would say point point wise is looking the best. Um, her her fairgrounds got demolished. I forget who demolished it. I think it was Dix. Probably Dix. Um, and so it's no longer worth any points. However, that can be rebuilt. She can get rid of that demolished token, and then it's going to be worth three more points. And then she's going to have a four multiplier, which is good. Um, and a lot of people have taken red followers. Uh, Lefty has a red follower as well. Smiley and uh, Roadrunner has two red followers, so she's, she's looking good in that way. She can get some points that way. Um, the only one who went his own way was was Dix, and we'll see, we'll see how that, that works out. I mean, he's going to have everyone else working against his white unless they invest in, in that as well. Uh, rough start for Lefty. Rough, rough start. Though that, that extra intelligence point will um, help us down the road, as will this, this skull head guy. I'm, I'm enjoying the, the linking up um, so far. I, I think it's, it's I'm enjoying both games more than I would otherwise. I've played both of these games solitaire um, just by themselves, and I, 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 I enjoy them both, but I'm I find they're, they're lacking. I enjoy this this one more solitaire. I think it's, you know, games like this, I think, lend themselves better to solitaire than tile laying games. But um, I'm definitely enjoying the Geos better. I'm enjoying this better with a little more um, depth and dimension to, to what's going on. And so it's fun. <laughs>